So just go ahead and download that file or go to that path, double click on the batch file. That's it. When you run your Revit for the first time, after you install that uh, add-in, you will see this. Our DLLs are not signed, unfortunately, so you will get this file. Just just make sure to take a look at that um, name of this Revit 2023 add-in TKMNSC. Uh, it is safe. We do everything in-house. Uh, we have very good um, control on that, so it's not a virus. It's not anything that will harm your machine at all. So just go ahead and click Always Load, so that next time when you start the same Revit version, you will not get that prompt again. So just click on Always Load. After you install that, you will see three tabs on your uh, on in your on your Revit tab section. You will see the TK1SC. TK1SC Disciplines and the TK1SC BIM tab appear in your Revit section. And the TK1SC tabs are basically all the features available for everybody, not particularly just for TK1SC. I think it applies to a lot of the different groups or, uh, also. So things like dealing with space, tag, uh, text note and sheet, and all that general stuff, I try to group them together in this tab. So all the common primary features should be found within this tab here. And then the next tab, TK1SC Discipline, they are more or less, we are very focused on the TK1SC workflow or template. If your project is starting with a TK1SC uh, template, most of these features should be working for you. If you have a different template or you do not follow the TK1SC workflow or not using the TK1SC shared parameters, some of these features will be applied, but some of that features will not work at all. Um, that, that's the way um, that's the way that we design it when we when we start this project. It's, um, these features still be, uh, behave that way. Uh, we, I'll go over some of that later on when we come to this section. And then the last tab is the tk BIM tab. This tab is really focused on the follow following the tk BIM workflow uh, template. A lot of these tools are focused on our project setup process, uh, helping us purge our project after setup and dealing with our view filter, view template, and some of the family stuff and visibility override in our project. So it's, I, I say, more like 90% of these tools are TK1SC focus. Only the copy sheet and copy views and sheet and the delete uh, tool, they are more like general for everybody. And for this version here in version three and four, I start uh, putting up the F1 help. So if you hover over your uh, feature button and then if you hit the F1 key, it will take you to uh, a video to show you what happens uh, when you click that button or how to use that feature properly. So I, I give you a very, usually I give you a very simple use case, how the tools are supposed to be used. So if you are unsure what happened when you click that button, it's not a bad idea to hover over to that button and then go hit F1 and go to that video and take a look at uh, how this feature works. That's the new feature uh, in version three and in version four. If you have version two, uh, it's not gonna work. So go ahead and install the latest version on your system. This is the feature overview in version three. I think we have more than 20 new features in version three in October. Uh, they are they are highlighted right there. And then in version four, some of these features got updated and I add new So I combine them all together. Today, we have a lot to cover. I try to cover as much as possible and I will show you a simple use case of that feature so that you have a good idea what that does. It may not be the perfect use case for you or it may not uh, be the be the best use case at all, but um, if you got some ideas to, oh, how, how, how about changing that workflow this way? Or uh, can you cover more work uh, use case with this tool? send me a private message later on after the meeting or send me an email or call me, whatever I am, whatever to get those feedback from you to, to make our tool more usable and more user-friendly. So I try to cover as much of this as possible. So now is the demo time.
if you are dealing with spaces in your model, I think in our TK1SC workflow, mostly the mechanical group, we, we are creating our spaces in our model. And over the time, you will have your spaces not set to the correct height or they are below the ceiling by default. When this happens, your space calculation, your, your volume calculation would be wrong. Meaning that um, if you are depending on this to get your airflow, you, you, it would be wrong. So this tool is trying to fix this situation. What, it, what happens is when you click this button, the tool is going to go over each spaces in your model and, and start moving it to the, uh, to the next building level. So you have to define which levels in your model is a building level, which one are just like for reference. So when you click this button, it pops up this dialog and asks you, tell me which levels are built, considered to be building level. And then you basically uncheck the ones that are unrelated. I don't want any spaces to stop at this level, for example. So I just pick level one, level two, level three, and then click OK. Your spaces will to the next building level your calculated volume would be correct in this case. This is, this is as simple as that. Let me close that, we don't need that anymore. Okay, now the next two I want to show is the tag duct and pipe. Um, this is a request coming from one of our team and what they want to do is I want to tag all these for example, all these pipes in this view here, but um, there's no easy way because they have more criteria. Instead of just tagging, um, tagging the pipe. if I use the Autodesk tag all tool, for example, I'm using the, uh, the pipe tag to tag all the pipe uh, size and system in here. What happens is I'm getting every single piece of pipe being tagged, but the criteria that I want to add here is I don't care about small pipes like that like a half inch, I don't care, I'm not tagging it, or any pipes that are small like that, really, really short or small, I don't care, I don't want to tag it. One more thing here, in this model here, I'm ha having some up and downs, rise drops over there. When I'm tagging it, it's creating a mess. So it's not an ideal situation. What we want to accomplish is, I want to include three more criteria in here, only tag the pipes with uh, a minimum let me turn off this leader here. With a minimum diameter, anything smaller than certain size, I don't want to tag. Anything shorter than certain size, I don't want to tag. And anything that is vertical, I don't want to tag. So in that case, we created this, this tool. This tool can has two options. You can put your tag on the top side or the left side of the duct or pipe. And the other option gives you an, a choice to put your tag on the right side and bottom side. So let me, let me try the top and left option here. First thing is, can you tell me what kind of, uh, what type of tag you want me to use to tag other pipes? So invoke that command, select tag. And here's the, here's the better option for us. Now I can define what size, what minimum size I want in my tagging and what is the minimum length of the, of the duck or tag I need in order to avoid those small and short pieces. So in, in this case, I want anything smaller than one and a half inch, I don't want to tag. And anything shorter than one foot, forget it, I don't want to tag. And another beauty of this too is that we want to tag the pipe either on the top side or the bottom side, but I want to maintain that offset between the edge and the tag or the center line and the edge. So by default, we use the um, offset from edge. So every tag that I put in will have the same offset from the edge of the pipe to the tag. The last step here, if you take a look at the, uh, the two tip here, I let you select maybe a group, only a group of duct or pipe to tag, or you can click anywhere to tag everything in this view. So for example, I want to select, for example, only just this portion of it. I want to ignore the, one, the, the ones at the bottom. Then only the top portion of ducts, I mean pipes that is larger than one and a half inch and longer than a foot. Anything that is shorter like that, it will not be tagged. They will be ignored. And the offset between the pipe and the tag is the same for every tag. 
Same thing that we repeated for the other option here. If I choose the bottom or left, I mean right, and then select the tag, I, I leave it as the same, uh, same criteria. And this time I'm going to put it uh, for all the pipes. Now you see that only short, uh, longer than a foot, and the tag are now placed at the bottom of it, or the or the right side of it. Anything that is vertical, consider like slope or vertical, will not get attacked because this tool only works for uh, horizontal pipe. Anything I, I think at this point, anything larger than thirty five degree is considered slope and they will not be tagged as well. So any vertical section, you don't see that being tagged in the view. If we need to tag the vertical section of the pipe, we have another two for it. Let me change the type of tag that I have in my drawing first. I want to tag my type this way for all the vertical sections. Come back to this tab, use the tag vertical duck or pipe uh, command. It works similarly, select the type of tag I need, and then it looks really familiar. In this case, I'm going to put the tag on, on only the vertical sections. I'm going to click anywhere, and now only the vertical sections get tagged. All right. Let's move on to the next one. I want to show the delete often room tag and space tag. Our rooms are linked from the architectural model. So if you tag the room, 99% of the time when you open a project, you see something like that. The architect have, have probably deleted the room in the background, so your model looks uh, unclean now. In my opinion, we rather show nothing like a missing tag. It's better than showing something like a question mark. It doesn't make sense. It, it looks just like um, crappy. So you have to just go over your plan and find each one of them and delete them which is tedious. Why don't we let the, let the machine handle that? Um, the blue one is for room tag. The green one is for space tag. I try to use the same kind of like the same color scheme in, in Revit for you to easily identify it. So in that case, all I have to do is in, the, in this model, in the entire model, I just did the delete often room tag command, they'll be gone. So now I don't have to worry about having a, the question mark tag floating around in my model. If you straightly want, in my view, I don't want any duplicate tag. I just want one tag per room. You can use a delete duplicate command tool to remove the extra duplicate tag on your view. These two commands are per view, so you just you have to repeat this uh, for every view because sometimes I know when we have like the section or the dependent view, we want maybe two room tags appear in the in the parent. So these two commands are working on your current view only, but the delete often works for the entire project. So you just click it once, it's supposed to clean up your project completely. And you don't have to worry about seeing those question mark tags anymore. The next command I want to go over is the, the new uh, even space command for tags. Let me open the plumbing plan. I have a small uh, two bathroom here. I, I have to, what I want to do, what I want to accomplish here is I want to tack it. I also want to define the fixture type. The problem is that these fixtures are in the link. So if I tack it, there's no way for me to change the type. For example, let me t try tack all. If I include a plumbing fixture tag and tagging everything in the link, what happens is I got all that. And the problem is, again, I can't redefine it because I want, I want a nice fixture schedule, plumbing fixture schedule in my model. It's not going to work. So let me borrow the connection tools here. This tool is going to map your plumbing fixture or other like lighting fixture or mechanical equipment from the link. And then they will put a connection in your model. These connections has no 3D geometry at all. It is more like just a symbol. 
but because it's a it is a model category, so it will show up in your schedule. So I want to use that plumbing fixture connection to to add a plumbing fixture to all the plumbing fixtures coming from the architectural model. There we go. Now every every plumbing fixture has a connection right now. I mean this connection uh, uh, more like for you to use for your schedule more like. And the next problem is that I need to define it. Otherwise, when I tag it, I go back to use the tag or to. What happens is, oh, okay, they look like that. It's not good, but um, now it's now it's time for me to kind of clean it up. We can use the tag tool to help us clean up these things now. First, I want to use the alignment tool to align them to the left. Maybe it's not good enough. Okay, I'll move it to the side, and now I have to deal with the spacing. This new tool here tries to help dealing with the spacing. There we go. Oh, I think I also tagged the, uh, the link fixture here. So I hope you get that idea. This is just trying to help you make your drawing a little more tidy. Uh, instead of moving it manually by hand, you can use this tool to kind of put the tag in the even spacing. And now you can see, okay, like this one, this one is the tag for your, uh, I want to label this one like toilet one, something like that. So now uh, you can you can tag your your plumbing plan in a more neat and clean way. I have my, for example, my urinal here. This guy, U one, and I have my. Sink. Good luck. Let me remove these extra. I forgot to uncheck that chat box. Okay, now let's do it one more time. Okay, much better. That's basically how the even space uh, tool is supposed to work. All right. Now let's move on to the next feature I want to show. This, this feature is already uh, available, I think, in version 2. But we made some changes this time. OK. Uh, we usually want to copy something, always, when there's no need to uh, redo something. If we can copy it from a sheet to another, why not? So this tool available for you to copy four, four types of elements from one sheet to another sheet. Schedule, keynote legend, um, drafting legend, or generic annotation. You can copy it from one sheet to another. In the past, I think it used a filter, which is not very intuitive. I think we can do it a little better this time. So. I want to, for example, I want to copy this keynote legend, for example, from one sheet to other sheet. I in, in, invoke this copy to sheet command. First thing is tell me what you want to copy. I'm going to copy this legend and then tell me what sheet you want to copy that to. Uh, for example, I want to copy that to these two sheets, the M002 and 020. Select the sheet you want, the target sheet you want that to be copied to and just click OK. And that object or that element will appear on the same, uh, on the sheets at the same location. I think this is an, an improvement. It makes it a little easier to, to be used this time compared to the previous version. Uh, same change made is made to the set revision tool. Let me zoom into the revision schedule. You probably all know that when we have to add a revision to the revision schedule, what you typically want to do is select your sheet, not title block sheet, and then go to your edit button in the revision on sheet uh, property. And then for example, I want to add, for example, 
revision three to order sheet. All you have to do is just check that button and then click OK. Then it will appear on your revision schedule. And Revit doesn't allow So uh, to do that, use the set revision tool. For example, I want to add revision three to other sheet. Just pick the revision you want to add in the in the add revision section, and then pick the target sheet you want to add the revision to. Click OK. That revision will be added to other sheets. If you can add, it means that you can remove. Go to the remove to go to the remove revision section select that revision and then select the sheet you want it to be removed and click ok then it will be removed the revision schedule on your selected sheets so that is the the select sheet feature was new in this version okay we'll go back to check the aligned view uh tool i think that was include in version three. Okay, in my project, in my test project, I have, I have the technology um, area A B C D plan. I have first floor, second floor, uh, ceiling plan, floor plan. They are all um, set up this way. So the point of this tool is I want my, for example, my area B plan, my view to be aligned at the same spot on each sheet. So what I need to do is let me let me get one as a as like a control or like a sample. I want to let, let me put it right here, like in the middle. I want all my area B plan to uh, to locate to be located at that same spot on all my plans. So this tool is designed to do this. If your floor plan or ceiling plan uses the same scope box as your control or your model plan, it will be aligned to the same spot. So all these area plan, area B plan uses the area B scope box. Like that, they use um, area B scope box. And I want every sheet to uh, every sheet that has area B plan on it to align that way. So go to the TK when I see tab. Use the align view tool, and then tell me which plan will be your control. In this case, I select this viewpoint or this view. All my area B plan will be moved to that same location, like this one. So that's one way to sort of align. I want to align all the view to the same spot on the same sheet. So when, when you have the PDF created, when you're flipping the PDF, they look really nice that way. Two I want to show or demo is this uppercase tool. Um, we have the add-in version. Uh, taking a look at the sheets, we have some sheet names with lowercase and some uppercase lowercase and all that. This tool just kind of like clean that all up. Now they're all uppercase. I have a version for views, drafting view, and schedules too. So for example, these schedules, they are not uppercase. So I can run this tool to turn them all to uppercase. Drafting view, just run that too. Update all the names to uppercase. View names as well like these rooms and spaces. Just run that uppercase view name. They all turn into uppercase. It's really simple. Now let's take, take a look at the grid 2D and 3D feature. If you ever have to change your grid from, from a 3D, by default they are 3D, and if you want to adjust the grid in this view and not touching the actual grid, you have to change first, you have to change that to 2D and then you make the adjustment. But 
think about how many grids you have to meet, you have to move in your model. They are all 3D, so you have to click on every single one of them and then change it to 2D, which is tedious. And this tool is designed to do that. In your view here, if I click the grid 2D button, now all your grids turn into 2D. So now you can change your grid location and it's not affecting any other views. Same thing if you have, if you want this uh, to be turned back to 3D, go back and click the grid 3D button. Now your grid is turned back, in this view is turned back to the 3D mode. So now anything you change, you need to be careful because you might be changing other, other views as well. Next command is the color system and this black system that we um, we add in version three. Let me show the docs and pipe. At any point of time when we're designing our ducts and pipes, color is very important. I think it helps us a lot. But at some point, maybe you want to plot for deliverable and you want to turn that into just purely black and white. I don't want any color in there. How are these pipes colors defined? If you go to your piping system, they are all defined there. For example, I'm talking about not nothing in the view template or view filters are, are, are involved. By default, all your color probably are set up in your piping system and duct system. For example, this is a domestic hot water pipe. Domestic hot water. Why is it red? Wait a minute. Funny, what happened? I probably look in the wrong spot. Anyway, um, this this command is trying to put all your default system color back to uh, no override. So when we click on the black system, your pipes turn into black and white. Your ducts turn into black and white. We are not doing anything on filter. We are not changing any view specific changes. This tool simply change all your system defined color in your duct systems, and then maybe we need to plot it that way. When you're done, simply click the color system. Just um, make a note that this tool does not, it does not remember what you had before. It just changed the color back to the template default setting. So at some point, if you change your hot water pipe to pink for some reason, it will not remember it. It just remember at, at the beginning when the template was set up, hot water is red. So it will change your color back to red. When you click on that button, it doesn't remember what happened when you click the black button. It's not doing it. It just set it back to the default template color. That's basically how, why we need this tool. And the next new tool that we had is the ungroup model and ungroup detail. We had one project that has thousands of grouped objects in our model, and we need to ungroup them. Obviously, it's a difficult task because you have to go through each group definition and find all the instances and then ungroup it. That is pretty painful. So we invented this tool. Let me show you an example what what happens when we click on that button. I right For example, I have a I have a group here. I have a group there. The group definition is there. It's already uh, created, and this group are in the in the model. This is group two. This is group one. If I scroll down to the group definition here, this is this guy here, and group two is this guy here. So this two simply ungroup all the place instances of the group. It doesn't change the group definition at all. So if I click ungroup model, all the grouped instances will be ungrouped. 
So now you can see that all these pipes became individual pipes again because I ungrouped that. But the definition is unchanged. If I place another instance, it will still be uh, there. So let me place one instance. Oh, sorry, I put the wrong one. So you see that that group definition is still there. That command simply ungroup the instances. Same thing for detail. If we have a detail group, like that, they're all grouped together. And if you need to make any edit, you can simply use the group detail, ungroup detail command to turn that into uh, single entities. So it's more like just a shortcut for you to quickly ungroup everything in your model. Definitions won't change. Okay, the next one is the below image. I think this one is new in version four. Let me open the sheet with some images in there. These are not real panel schedules. These are uh, PNG files or JPEG files. They are more like links, right? Everybody knows that it's more like links uh, in a project. If your links get updated, for example, if I plot my new panel schedule and I linked it to this project, now I need it to be updated. So to do that, you want to go to your insert tab, manage image. What you have to do is to click on every single one of that and then click the below button because uh, you think you can multiple select, you can hold a shift key or, or control key, whatever, to select more than more than one, which is a nightmare because if you have 20 or 50 images, you have to repeat, you have like 100 clicks already right there, um, which doesn't make sense at all. If you can update all of them at once, why not? Click below images. all the definition or all the links in this model will be updated so you don't have to go through that image and reload them one by one and if you also notice sometimes when we link the model i mean link the image and then delete that instance now they are no longer in that model meaning that can zero simply means that there's no place instance in your model that means it is trash now we are not using it and of course you you need to go through if you want to like a more clean and tidy project you want to go through that and delete all these zeros select that click the delete button um also why why not if we can let automation to handle that so select delete unused image uh select this command there if we go back and check the zero instance is gone so it it goes through every single link and check to see if the count is zero. If the count is zero, bye-bye. Delete that. Okay, that's pretty much for the TK1SC tab. Now we are moving into the TK1SC. I think we are really running short of time right now. I'll try go through more important ones first. In the TK1SC discipline, one of one of the scenario that we run into all the time is we load uh, custom content or custom family from manufacturer or from some source and we want to use it in a project but one of the most challenging problem is that these families do not have our shared parameters let me show you what i mean for example i have a lighting plan I have my lighting fixture schedule. Nope, not that one. You probably notice when we, for example, I have a test sample fixture right there, this D1 guy. If the parameter is a built-in, uh, built-in Revit parameter, you can edit. But any share parameters in your schedule you won't be able to edit that because your family is missing all these parameters so now we told you we can do nothing 
So the simplest way to fix this problem is to add those missing parameters back to your family. For that reason, we create two for this. So come back to your family, go to edit family, and if you check the family type, all these are more like the typical uh, parameters. Maybe it includes some parameters from the manufacturer, but we are missing every parameters in our schedule, which is not a, it's not good. So go to the TK when I see discipline. For this case, we only have lighting fixtures, but this feature can be can be extended to all other disciplines. So this command is going to add all these missing TK parameters to this family. So simply right click on that, let it run. Um, as long as your machine is connected to your share parameter file, it will it will just do its magic. Okay, now let's check our family type again. All these missing parameters are added to the right spot. And of course, now it's your time to start changing your parameter values. It is up to you. And when it's done, load it back to the project. Uh, fixture schedule again. Now you can edit these parameters because they are in that family. All right. Okay, let's let's try that. I am going to show one feature in the electrical. I think that's very helpful. Can you see? Panel schedule F. In our workflow, we change all the low classification to just one single letter here. And then in our low classification, I found something like an alien. We don't want things like that, lighting. The challenge in this case is now we need to figure out who's, who is that family who's causing this problem. And it is very painful. Believe me, if you try that, it is a very, very painful task to find out that family. So for that reason, we figure out a, a solution for that. In the discipline, uh, TK Messi discipline tab, we have one called export circuit property. Simply click on that and it will generate, it show you all the instances of family in your circuit. So for example, I want to, let's create some filters so we don't have to go through everything. My panel is PHF, so let's create, let's click that button, create this file, and then I'm going to isolate PHF, this panel, and I remember that it is circuit number three. So let me isolate that. Okay, here we go. It tells me, okay, what is the element ID? What type it is? what panel, circuit number, and what is the name of uh, that low name or description. Now, this is the key. It tells me, okay, some of that has L, some of that has lighting. If you understand what happens here, that means one of these family, probably family, not family type. It is one of these families is creating a problem. They have either one of that has L and then the other one might have lighting, something like that. Something is causing this problem to happen. So in this case, I can't, I'm, can't tell you the trick. It is all, always look at the family first. So in here, it, only two families are involved. So let's take a look at one of the family first. Let's take a look at this one. I copy that ID, come back to your Revit, go to the Manage tab, you can, this view is no good. Go to Select by ID. That is the ID I got from that Excel file and I click OK, it is highlighted for me. So one of the possible problem may be this family. So I, I'm going to check this guy, select the connector. Looks like it's good. The low classification is L, so probably not this one. So we are looking into the second one now. How about this guy? Copy that ID, just repeat the same process. We go to manage, select by ID. This is the second ID. 
just this connector. If I go to edit family and select the connector, here we go. This guy has a low classification lighting. This is not what I want. So we'll try to fix it this way. Now I can fix this definition, point it to L, the single letter that we want, load it back to the project. Okay, now take a look at the panel schedule again. It's now clean. That lighting is gone because we fixed that family. So now we have a little bit of um, help from this tool to kind of isolate which one is the problematic family and we can fix it to the point instead of like blindly search for family from, from I don't know how many lighting fixtures in this model. We have about 10 minutes left. I want to leave at least a few minutes for us to ask questions or let me go to the TK when I see BIM tab. The way we set a project is this. We have a base template and all our M, E, P, like fire protection technology, all our model setup were done within that base template. And then we spin off and create an individual mechanical model, electrical model, plumbing model, etc. We are only trying to set up the project once and then we start duplicating views and sheet and then we do some cleanup after that. In this case, let me try that first because we were running out of time. I want to systematically delete my level two views and sheets because I it will take a long time otherwise. So in this tool, delete views and sheet is giving you a UI. You can kind of manage all your delete deletion in one spot. For example, I want to delete all my views in on level two. So I include if the view name contain level two, delete it. If my sheet name for example, I can also select to select to delete um, all these level two sheets. So all my level two will be gone. All the level two views are supposed to be gone too. I click OK. Now you see that the level two sheets are gone and the level two views should also be gone. There we go, only level one and then roof. It's just to give you a quicker way to select the views and sheets to, to be deleted. Okay, now, this is pretty complicated. Um, I'll try to go slowly, bear with me, because we do a lot of copying. So we need to find a way to copy the, for example, in this case, I have the technology sheet set up it doesn't have to, to, to be technology. It could be electrical. It could be mechanical. It could be anything. It could be also just like X, X, Y, Y, and Z, Z. In, in, in my example, I use X, X, and Y, Y, and Z, Z. It could be anything. So in that case, let me scroll down to this section here. I want to expose the name of it. For example, my project is ready. They are 99% good now. I want to copy this sheet for, for example, to uh, for mechanical, and I want to create uh, another set for lighting, for example. What do I do? I'm targeting these T sheets, T technology sheets, and these technology views, and I want to make them, for example, mechanical. So in here, first, you need to create a base view. Step one is create all these base views and sheets. They are step number one. Step number two, tell me what are the characteristics of these views. In this case, I'm, I'm calling it the keyword. Tell me the keyword. In this case, the technology view all has the word T in there. Also, the sheet name, they're all being called technology, like the technology overall plan and the technology area plan. So in this case, the keyword is technology. It, this tool also copy the views not just the, the, the sheets, it also copy the views. So tell me what the view names are called. In this case, they are tag. See that they're all overall tag floor plan, overall uh, tag floor plan area A. If I want to create mechanical, I want to replace this word tag with something. So tell me the keyword there. 
which is tech in that case. Now, tell me what discipline or subdiscipline you wanted to duplicate. You can use, you can choose the preset from this list there. For example, I want to create mechanical view. So when I create, select mechanical, it automatically populate M mechanical, and then they only copy four plans. So ceiling plans are not being considered for mechanical. And if you don't want to use that, that's also totally fine. You can type something like, for example, lighting. I want to create my lighting, my lighting plan. And then for lighting, I simply need a ceiling plan. I don't need floor plan at all. So what I'm expecting when I click OK, this program is going to look into all your views and sheet. If the sheet name is T something and has the name technology in, in it, it will duplicate that sheet. And if the, the view has the, the word tag in it, it will also duplicate it. And two set will be generated, mechanical floor plan and lighting ceiling plan. So now let's click OK. After 20 minutes, it will generate those sheets and views. Uh, because I delete the level two, I think it's going to take a little shorter this time. I hope it will finish within a minute or so. The key here is when you set up the project or when you before you duplicate your views and sheet, you have to study your views and sheet and make sure that their naming are, are consistent. Make sure that they can be, uh, this is a debug warning I forgot to turn off, unfortunately. So now if we go back to the, uh, to the sheet structure, see what happened. We have now the mechanical floor plan duplicated and we have the lighting ceiling plan duplicated. There's one bonus of this feature. I think Autodesk also has a duplicate sheet feature, but uh, I think we are doing a little better than, than that. Let me show you what I mean. compare the technology floor plan and the area A plan, mechanical. Let me tile the view. It doesn't only copy the view, but it also copy a few things like the keynote legend, like this um, drafting view legend and any annotation lines. And one more bonus, all these title block parameters. So it's trying to copy as much as possible. So you see that all these parameter are also copy over. The key plan also get copy over. The only difference of these two sheets are the sheet number and the sheet name, which is the keyword that you enter in the, in the dialogue. Other than that, everything is identical. Two sheets are supposed to be identical. If they are not, let me know. So that's the bonus, the key of this feature compared to the Autodesk tool. We are really running out of time. In this copy sheet feature works pretty much the same way, but the target is the sheet only, meaning that it, you don't have to provide me the keyword for sheet number and sheet name and um, view name. Instead, you select the sheet from here, and then it looks pretty familiar, right? You have to enter your prefix and then your discipline name, which is the new sheets to be created. If you want, for example, in my previous case, I want to enter technology in here because my, my sheet has the name technology in there. And then what I need to do is just enter M, and then the dis discipline name will be Anico. For example, for the lighting sheet, then I have to select another sheet in that case. I have to select the technology um, lighting plan. And then instead of M, I, I have to call it L and then lighting. Something like that. It, it's pretty, pretty similar, but more like sheet centric. The other two is both view and sheet centric. So that one is a lot more complicated, but it's more comprehensive. This one is a little more lighter. I think I still do the job though. All right, uh, we have five minutes left. I would like to open this up for questions or comments.
anybody has any questions about everything that you've just seen in the past 50 minutes? The overlapping lead lines um, and schedule. And the schedule. Let's go back to that plumbing view. Um, for these overlapping lead lines, I I don't have anything to resolve it at this at this moment. I think what makes most sense is um, you manually put them in in a nice order like this and then just run the tool again i i'm hoping that it cleans up in this view a little bit more Very good question. I forgot to show that with too many things to, to see. In my plumbing fixture schedule, now they're all defined that way. So this one show all the instances. Otherwise, we can we can have the, the other one that show, I don't, I forgot why it's blank. I think as long as we defined it, it should not be blank. So basically, that, that's how it looks. In this schedule here, only query the, the plumbing schedule, I mean, the plumbing fixtures within this model, nothing in the link. So once we define it, now you can create your own plumbing fixture schedule that way. And then if we group them, oops, let me see. Short by type mark. See what happens. Yep, something like that. So now we have your family type, your description, your unit number, like the one that I defined here. And then you can now start defining your your sizes of pipe, things like that in your schedule. So that that connection to in this tool here, this connection tool here was um I think in version two, they already exist, but majority of the use is on lighting fixture and mechanical equipment. Um, try, go ahead and try that on plumbing fixture too. I, I don't see any reason why we can't use it to create a, a schedule. It will give us an accurate count on what the link fixtures are in this model. And we can manipulate this schedule a lot easier. Of course you can do it in like, um, annotation or generic lines and text that way, but this is more like a, a rapid doing things the rapid way, so you can manage your schedule in a rapid schedule. There's a lot of comment in the chat. I I can go through them. Let me quickly show this. Maybe it, it answer your question, Miro. Uh, I need to see the zone. Child that view. Oh, man. I think I need to show the schedule as well. 
Okay. If we take a look at this plan here, we have one VAV unit serving one zone here. This one, this one is serving this, this one is serving this. And if we take a look at the at VAV box name, they all had that zone number involved in there. If you if you do that this way, this VAV2 is going to I try to make it a little smarter. Um, it will never be perfect, but if your VAB name contains the zone number, this tool is going to uh, set the VAB surface room to your equipment so that it will appear on your um, schedule. For example, let me run this tool. You'll see that this surface, I think it's called TK surface, something like that, that parameter will populate with the name of the room, the name and number of the room that this VAB is servicing. And this tool has a second version. It only lists the room number. So as long as your VAB, your VAB's name contains the zone number, it, the program behind it will do all the logic. It will, it will figure out, okay, which room it is servicing, and it will put that name in there, in this column so It's right reading there. it from the space. It is not reading it from the space. It is oh. actually reading it from your VAV box. And that VAV box is trying to match to a zone. And that zone contains the space. And it will see what rooms is in that space. And then it will put up that name in there. It's very complicated. But if you look at that from a very high level, all you have to understand is if your VAV name has that zone number, that zone number must be associated with some rooms and that room number will be populated in that column. Yeah, you're, you're partially right. It looks in, into the space, but it actually go through a lot of steps. It go through your VAB box and then the zone and then the space and then the room and then it put the room name in that column. That the other the other two that um, populate the flow is also pretty interesting though. Now everything is zero. If I click that, it will populate the, the flow in that um, surface by that VAV is exactly the same concept. It is looking into your VAV box and see what air terminals are in that zone. And then it will sum up the, uh, the VAV flow, I mean the flow in the air terminal and put it to the VAV box. So for example, if I, if I duplicate these two guys, now this room has double the flow. Instead of 200, I'm expecting something like 400 in that schedule. All I have to do is update that schedule, just run that two again, and they will be updated to 400. Because now you have 400 CFM in this room, which is in this zone, which is surfaced by this equipment. So I, I hope that helps. Sorry about it. Uh, we are running a little long now. It's 12.03. Um, I respect your time, your lunch hour, your next meeting, whatever. And um, do we have any, any other questions? that we really want to, to, to be answered right, right now. If not, um, go ahead and give me a call or um, if you have any other questions or comment, you feel free to give me a call, email me, text me, whatever. Uh, we can, we are more than happy to, to answer or, and obviously the next thing I'm looking for is your input. If you have great ideas on automation, I, I spend so much time doing something like that. Can we automate it? Give me, a, we still have give me a, a call. A, a, yeah. a good a good amount of crowd that probably sounds like or looks like they want to stick around. I want to mention something that um, caught in my attention. Yeah. This is just sharing. Uh, when you have duplicate room tags, I've often gotten phone calls or, or uh, messages to help them resolve. And yeah. the issue is not duplicate room tags, is that they have sometimes room tag and space tag. Oh, okay. So, so end users, designers, engineers, draft, drafting people need to decide and, and, and make sure, do I have duplicate room tag or do I have a room tag and a space tag? Yeah, I um, think at this point we have to be clear, do we really want room tag yeah. or space tag in our view? And yeah, working with both at, at some point, if we have no choice, That's I know that cute. sometimes the architect doesn't define the room the same way we want it. So we have to create some spaces in there. Otherwise Another, we have, yeah. Is a question for you, Kevin, on the revisions that you showed us, is that 
tool only for sheets that don't have clouds like when an architect or a contractor wants us to add a revision very good question very very good question um we we have to understand that there are two reasons why a revision appear on a sheet one is the manual changes that we put in there um do i have a sheet right now there are two there are two factors why something appear in the revision schedule if your revision schedule has a delta or a cloud, for example, um, I think I have a sheet. Yeah, if we're okay to stick around, yeah, feel free to stick around and we I can try to answer as much as possible. If you have a meeting to go, don't worry about it. Okay, I'm using this as a for me to play around. Why do we by default? Why do we have revision one, two, three on that sheet? Simply because we have that cloud. One, two, three on it. And um to turn that off, to turn that off, we have to do the first step is make sure that that cloud and delta are invisible. This process is very painful. I went through that a couple of times. What you have to do is, how do I make version, for example, one, two, three, to disappear on the revision schedule? I have to select them and hide that. Um, I have that in the view as well. Hide that. Now they're gone. So. Um, this process in, involves two things. One, make sure that the clouds are not visible. You don't have to delete that. They can still be in the model, but they have to be hidden. That's step number one. Step number two is to make sure that your sheet edit in your um, sheet property, that edit, edit button, does not have that checked. You can manually add a revision to it, um, but if your cloud is visible there's no way you can remove it so we have another tool for this if you go back to the tk1sc tab i think this this tool is is created in version 2. so now i can manually hide all these clouds i click hide clouds and then you pick your revision i don't want to see version one let's try that i want i just want to hide one and three in in on on the sheet and click OK, all of that will disappear. So in this project, version one and three is already hidden. So this program goes through all your revision clouds in your project. In And if it's one and three, because I chose that, if it's one and three, it hides it. So it already automatically hides it. But of course, it doesn't mean that it's 100% bulletproof right now, because you may still have something like that. You may still have something like that, that can still cause that revision to show up on your on your sheet so to completely remove some revision or 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 all the revision on on your title block you have to basically you have to do two things make sure your revision is hidden and then make sure your revision is also removed from uh from all the sheets so that way i can that that is the only way I can guarantee that the title block is clean. Does it make sense? It, yes. Um, R R Ren Bautista asked if setting up sheets can make them match the architect location in the same, like to put the view, oh, align the view, fair. align your views the sheet to match the architect, and then mm. uh, Mark no, replied at to this that. Moment. That's a very good question. Uh, so other moment, than yeah. RF tools, RF tools is the only one. Okay. For RF two, I think um, you have to you have to open the architect's project and get the coordinate of their viewport on the sheet, and then you copy that over to your project. I think that right. is the only way. Still, I think this is not easy. It is a very yeah, it's, difficult it's, job. It's not one hundred percent guaranteed. Yes, not one hundred percent guaranteed. 
that answers everything. There were two other people that asked where's the location of the TXT file. I, I answered that. Another person probably didn't get your email to where is the uh, DAT file. I sent them a link. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. So oh, other than that, then, I think yeah. we answered everybody. Great. All right. Um, well, thank I mean, you so I much for your time. Back yeah. To us. yeah. Yep. Thank you. Uh, feel free to get back to us, email me directly or email um, the BIM team directly for any questions or anything, or, or if you need help in storing that software. At, at this point this year, I've made this tool available for all the WSP system and TK1SC system. If your system does not have our domain name, if you install it, for example, on your home computer, for example, uh, it will not work, unfortunately. Um, that's how you know, how we go. But uh, let me know uh, if you need help on installation or how the tools are being used or unclear on anything. Give me a call. Give me a, an email. Um, otherwise, I, I'd love to return your lunchtime back to you. And I'll see you next time.